Today we're going to jump in and I'm going to show you how to make beautiful certificates using Autocrat, Google Forms, and Google Sheets. Uh, there are templates available online. You can create your own from Canva. You can use these from Paula over at Slides Mania. You can also find free certificate uh, formats. You can also find free certificate templates over here on Canva. You can also use Google Slides or presentation slides and customize those to use as certificates as well. You would just need to download it as a PowerPoint file and then upload it to Google Drive and uh, use it as a Google Sheet. You would need to download this as a PowerPoint presentation and then you can do individual slides from that presentation and then upload that into Google Slides and use that as a certificate. So the beautiful thing about Canva is if you look at these certificates as opposed to these ones, a lot of these are more kind of like official certificate, you know, but there also have some, you know, cute elementary ones, uh, middle school ones. Um, I like these that are a little bit just more, um, I like these a lot because they come in different formats, right? So you've got like this, uh, I like these a lot because they come in more custom formats, right? So you've kind of got like this comic book one here that uh, lists off different things and the images and all the files are already in there. So when you download it, you have all of those ready avail readily available. You don't have to go find all of them. Um, so again, this is, this is one that, that I like a lot. Anyway, so there's some tools that you're gonna need to use before we start. So the first is you'll need to have access to Canva. Uh, you can get a free pro account. Uh, as an educator with an educator email, you can do that by following the link below. You'll need access to your Google Forms. You'll need access to Google Slides. You'll also need access or to install the AutoCrap plugin. Let's begin. The first step is, at least in my opinion, is to create a Google Form where you're going to gather information about who is getting the certificate. So what you'll do is is you can actually put this straight in a google sheet i like to create it in a form so multiple people have access to that and it's a quick and easy way to get that information to the sheet so for example i share this form with all of my teachers for our student of the week when they fill it out it automatically sends a certificate to that student and that student's parent email if we choose to uh, automatically that day as soon as they get the award. So there's some pieces of information that you want to gather from your Google form that will spit out into the AutoCrat certificate. One of them is automatically generated. That's the timestamp that always comes with Google Forms. The second one is a student email. Who are we going to email this certificate to? Now, you may not want to email this. You may just want to print it off and have it down in the office. That's fine as well. And then you'll want to have the recipient name if you want to have that recipient's uh, name on the actual certificate that automatically prints on it instead of handwriting it out. So I have those two pieces of information. I have the student's form name and I have the student's full email. What that looks like when we go to the Google Sheet with that information, when I click on responses, you'll see that in the first row across the top, I have a timestamp here. I have an email address. This is the auto-generated one if you turn that on in Google Forms. I turn it off because students won't be filling out their own certificate. I get the student full name. I get the student email. The rest of this information is actually auto-filled by AutoCrat once we have that. This is the Google Sheet part. You don't really need to create this. It's automatically created when you create the Google Form. Under extensions, you'll click AutoCrat. Now, if you don't have that installed already, what you'll need to do is you'll need to go to Google Workspace, type in uh, AutoCrat extension or just AutoCrat. It'll show up in the marketplace. It looks like this. You'll click the button up here that says install and it'll automatically connect with sheets as it tells you right there. So going back to our sheet that has the information, if we were in a blank sheet, we would have zero information here. So AutoCrat needs some information to pull to throw on that certificate. In order for AutoCrat to run properly, it needs information in the sheet to pull from. So I fill out the Google form once, and then what I do is I then run AutoCrat with the Google Sheet and form to produce that information that's going to go on the certificate. To merge these, we click extensions, click AutoCrat, click open. Now you'll notice while this is opening, I already have an instance running. So I'm actually going to delete that and run through it with you. Now I don't have any jobs here. So I wanna click on new job. I'm going to give it a name. So I'll call this student of the week template one. My plan is to have 
multiple templates so that teachers can choose a different variety of certificates that will show up in the student's inbox. We click next here. We're gonna pull our slide that we've created already. In order for the information to be pulled from a slide, the data has to be in brackets. That's how Autocrat recognizes that this is information that needs to go on the certificate and it'll allow you to pull this through when you format it. So you'll notice here that I have brackets around full name and I have timestamp. If you wanted to put in additional information, you would just bracket that information. But this is my template that I'm using and I'll share a bunch of templates below along with a link to Slides Mania templates over that Paula has put together. So this is the information that I need is the timestamp and the full name. So I'm going to use this student of the week slide presentation. Then I'll click on next and it's going to want to merge information from that sheet. You'll notice here where it says full name, I'm going to put in student full name. Timestamp is already in timestamp. We'll grab the email later. So I click on next. When we create a file that we send off to students, it'll also save a copy in your drive. So instead of naming it something different, I'm just going to call it the student full name. I paste that right here. And instead of a Google slide to send to students, I want to have it sent as a PDF. So I select PDF and I'll click next. Choose destination. Depending on where you want all of these PDFs to go, I want them in a specific folder that has all of my students of the week or students of the month or students of the day. So I'll choose a folder from my drive and I'm just gonna have it student of the week right there and I click select. So all of those files will be duplicated in my Google Drive. So if a student ever loses it, I have access to that or I can reprint it if I need to. So then I click next Then I click next again. Then I click next again. And now this is where we get into sharing the doc or the PDF or email. So I do want, do I want to share this doc? Do you want to share this doc? Well, the answer is yes. I'm going to share it as a PDF and I'm not going to allow collaborators to reshare. So I'm going to click on no. And do I want it to send from a generic no reply e email address? I can click yes. But for me, I'm going to say no. I want it to come from me, the principal or the teacher, whoever's filling out that form. It's going to basically come from me because I'm creating this file. Now the to address, this is where that student email address comes in handy. So I want to grab the student email address and I just click on it and click paste here. If I wanted to CC a parent or BCC anybody else, I could CC this right here. Remember on the form though, I would have to collect the parent's email address to CC that. I have not done it on this one. Type in the subject. This is the subject line in the email. When the email comes across, this is the subject line. Congratulations, Spencer Campbell, you are the student of the week. That's the information that I pulled in. But instead of putting the name right here, I want it to automatically merge the student name. So I'm going to grab student full name and paste it right in there. Then I can type a message to that student if I want. It can be a big long message and I can add tags, right? I can add the student full name. I could add the parent's email or the parent's name. Whatever information you grab on that Google form, you can use it as a merge option. And I'm not going to put a message in there just for the sake of this tutorial, but you can. But then I would click on next. Run on form trigger. I'm going to click yes. Run on time trigger. Yes. I want this to run every 12 hours. And I'm going to click save. Once this is saved, what I will do is I always go and test it out to make sure that the emails are properly used. And I'm going to delete one of these so I don't have two triggers running on the same job. So I always send myself a practice email to make sure that everything looks good. It's spelled correctly that the emails are going through properly. It's just a great way to make sure that things work. So I'll go back to my form and I'm just going to type in a generic name and then my email address. I'm going to submit this and you'll see now that I have a fourth entry on this Google Sheet. So I've got Bob Campbell's name, Mr. Campbell Rocks Gmail, and you can see that the Autocrat formula has already run and the code has already gone through and everything is there. And you can see here, this is what the status is. The document has been successfully created, the PDF has been created, and an email has been sent to mrcampbellrocks at gmail.com. So if I go back over to my email, I should have a certificate in a PDF that says Bob Campbell and it has all of that information on there. We'll check my inbox. There's the email to Bob Campbell. There's the certificate. I did not create this from scratch. This is a template from Canva and I just plugged in the image right here of Kelsey Peak, a little bit of the words and the brackets around the information that I needed. 
This is a great way to celebrate students automatically. You could create badges using this and celebrate students in your individual classroom. You could give a end of the month or end of the quarter or end of the year awards out this way as well. If you're here, it's most likely because you're an educator. Thank you for what you do for kids on a daily basis. I love you, I appreciate you, and I'm glad that you're here.